recording this in April, and I think that I'm going to share it with all of you sometime next week, but if it gets to be May, it gets to be May. I have gone back and forth about having a YouTube channel for a long time. I've always been drawn to YouTube and the video format, but it has never been something that I've really excelled at. Um, most of the time if I share anything online, it's over on Instagram. Sometimes I share things on Substack. I used to have a blog, it's pretty much died. But I keep going back to YouTube and I think some of my hesitation has to do with what I have seen happen on YouTube where there's maybe unkind comments or um, people are exploiting their families. But I think that there's a way to um, share um, things that are positive and uplifting and to be uh, considerate of those issues, right? So I'm making the decision to try to revive my channel. We're, we'll see where it goes. My hope is to release a video weekly. Um, I may not get to one every week, but I will try. Um, so I'm gonna reintroduce myself and then just share a few things that have been of benefit to me at this point in my homemaking journey. So I just start off, my name is Katie. Um, I'm a wife and mother to four small children, ages five and under, and I live outside of St. Paul with my husband, and we live in this beautiful old home that we didn't restore. The previous owners did most of the restoration, but I love um, living in a Victorian old home. I've always appreciated old houses, and I love being a full-time homemaker and wife. I used to do photography for a career, and um, I loved it as well, but um, right now I really enjoy being at home with my kids. So the main purpose I think of this channel will be sharing homemaking, just giving you all a little glimpse inside my life. Of course, I will not share everything about my life on this channel because it's important to use discernment, um, but I want to be really open about just my homemaking journey. And I would say that I started to get really into homemaking about a couple of years ago. I was almost a total stay-at-home mom from the beginning. I did do some photography until I got pregnant with my third, um, but for the most part, I've always been home. And creating a beautiful home, um, cooking food, and just creating ambiance, hospitality, those are all things that I'm really passionate about. And I think that they are missing from society or they're, they're greatly misunderstood. So I'm going to I pull back the curtain a little bit and show what life is like. I know there's lots of homemaking creators on here and I love following them and I love their videos and I thought, okay, it's time for me to be open and share with you. So the rest of this video is just gonna take you along different parts of my week, just a very normal average week for me. Um, I'm not going to be showcasing my children. Um, you might see them here and there. I just want to focus mostly on um, what I'm learning, um, skills that I want to share with others, things that are inspiring me. Um, I want to keep that the focus. Um, so I'm going to share uh, today a couple of really great books and resources. So in the morning, I try to get up before my kids. It doesn't always happen. Um, a lot of times my husband gets up beforehand and he'll make the kids breakfast, but once in a while I'll be, I'll have the discipline to get up early and I'm going to try to do that more, especially as summer comes. And I'll usually start with a little bit of devotional time. So I'll read some Bible. I sometimes listen to a rosary on Spotify. I will link all these things below. Oh, that was the other thing. I've said this before in these clips, but I will, if I mention something, I will always include the resource for it in the video description. Um, but this mother's manual, a friend of mine um, shared it with me and I really appreciate it. It's full of um, prayers and devotions for um, anyone in their motherhood season. Um, of course, love reading Holy Scripture. And then um, this prayer journal, this is probably my, let's see here. <laughs> fourth prayer journal. I've had one since 2020 or 2021. It's by Valmarie Papery and um, it's just fantastic. I will 
share a little bit more about that later, but I usually do some of that in the morning. And then two books that I'm really enjoying right now, um, A Mother's Rule of Life by Holly Perdot. She is a, a Catholic Christian writer. And this book came highly recommended to me by a um, fellow homeschooling mom. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, and then this is Beyond Mere Motherhood by Cindy Rollins. Uh, this also came recommended to me by some friends. And I'm really appreciating it. Um, there's aspects that maybe I don't agree with, but I do think that there is significant value in this text and it's worth picking up. So that's kind of where I'm going to be starting from. Like I said, I am hoping to get videos out to you once a week. It will probably be on Tuesdays or Thursdays in the morning on Central Time, but I'm not totally certain. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe and follow along with me, and I'm really glad that you're here. Um, if you have homemaking questions or tips yourself, I um, will also include my email and Instagram in the description below. This is a resource that I want to share. Um, it's called Wise Words for Moms, and a friend of mine recommended it. It's really nice because it looks like a calendar, so you can just hang it up wherever. I've got mine on the fridge. And it talks about behavior for kids, and it'll prompt you with questions that you can ask your child. Like, here's the behaviors. Let's say your child's complaining ask them these questions. There's a verse that corresponds. Then there's some encouragement and there's additional verses. I have found this to be really helpful for me, especially this column, because I feel like I can kind of explain to my child with parenting, like, here's why it's not okay to do X, Y, and Z. But this question, this heart probing section, I think, and there's some pain down there, um, I think that's really insightful. And I can definitely t see the wheels turning in whichever child I'm talking to. Like I can see the wheels turning in their head as I discuss this with them. And I have found it to be very helpful. So I will link that in the video description below. This wise words for moms. It's very inexpensive. I'm not a big proponent of like parenting influencing or like the, that industry of parenting advice feels frankly kind of predatorial to me, to moms. And I just, I like this because it's simple and you can adjust it for your own family values, but it's inexpensive and it's been a great tool. I also have this virtues and vices. I got this, I can't even remember where I got this, but I love it because frankly, it's a reminder for me. Like I can look at this and be like, okay, am I operating out of like pride? Well, I should try to, to be more humble. Um, am I being a glutton? Okay. So how can I practice more temperance, um, virtue, virtues and trying to like grow in habit training and in virtues is something that we're really focusing on because of the age of my children. So I like this. I just have this up. And then I have this little menu, um, menu plan. I got this on, I think it was on New Flora. Typically I just keep a menu plan in my phone on the notes app, but I like this because I can 
go through and write it all out and it, there's space for lunch and dinner which I or lunch and breakfast which I appreciate okay so I've got about a half hour before I need to leave to pick up my older two from school so I've unloaded the dishwasher I've done some dishes I set the table for dinner and I went ahead and I set up our coffee for tomorrow morning I just like to do that and get that out of the way I really want to start to learn how to use our espresso machine I don't really know how to use it if you know of any good youtube tutorials please send them my way but one of the areas i kind of reworked this lent was this coffee area so um i just get my coffee beans from costco grind them up and then i have this espresso powder i actually bake with that <laughs> some of the recipes i've been using lately call for espresso powder but i also bought it with hopes to use this machine. So that is something that I'd like to get into. And now I'm going to work on making a cilantro lime dressing for dinner tonight. Okay. I wanted to talk about, this is my new favorite apron. It is filthy. I'm going to come closer so you can see. It's got God knows what on it, but it's linen. It's cotton. Cotton linen. Yeah. And it's, really comfortable it's from etsy i will link it in the video description below i just ordered a second one because this it's become my favorite and it gets so dirty and i honestly just like to wear it when i'm around the house cleaning up cooking whatever i feel like my grandma like i feel like everyone's grandmas always wore aprons and that was my grandma too both of them and so i just feel like them and it's nice and it's keeps the rest of my clothing clean and I appreciate it. So I will link this in the description below. None of this is sponsored. I do some influencing over on Instagram, uh, but I don't know if I'm going to do influencing in this space in the same way. I, I'm not against monetizing videos, but I think that I would like to keep this space as like peaceful and non-consumeristic um, as possible, but I'm not going to not share things that I love and I'm not going to gatekeep stuff because that's no fun. So yep, I love this apron. It's so cute. It's got the um, straps in the back and they can cross. I actually probably should cross them because the straps often fall down, but it's easier to take off when they're not crossed and I'm still nursing, so I need to be able to get it off easily. Um, Okay, now I'm gonna do my next task, which is cilantro lime dressing for dinner. I wish you guys could see my setup <laughs> because I haven't decided if I am going to be doing videos on a regular basis I'm still kind of discerning and so as a result I'm not investing any money into any sort of equipment and hi buddy my two-year-old is just kind of out of the frame here almost yeah do you want to try one here you go um but anyway I've got a tripod that I use for my DSLR a book and a mug and I'm just praying that nothing falls and my mug doesn't break but I wanted to be able to show you guys what I'm working on this morning I'm making homemade egg salad so probably about a couple weeks ago I told Seth that my goal for the summer spring and summer one of my goals was to really work on bringing more protein into our diet we do eat a pretty protein rich diet as a family but mommy, 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 I just know Okay, but you gotta eat the one that I gave you. Yeah. Did you eat it? Yeah. Okay. I'll give you another piece, okay? And then no more, because I have to make yeah. this salad. Okay, no more. Okay. Um, we eat a protein-rich diet for the most part, but I feel like I could do better. And like I said earlier in another clip, I'm still nursing and I'm just a very active mom of four. And so I know that I need to prioritize protein. 
I will link any recipes that I'm using or any anything in the video descriptions below so you don't need to ask me for them or worry about not getting them. Um, no more eggs right now. Can you stir? Do you want a spoon? Can you stir? Um, anyway, egg salad and chicken salad are on the docket for today. I had a little bit of time this morning to make homemade mayo with our emulsion blender. I had an emulsion blender back when I was single. I got it for Christmas. I remember being... Guess what? My phone fell, but my mug didn't break, which is good. Anyway, I had a chance to start making homemade mayo a long time ago, and I loved it, and I have been obsessed. Well, then our emulsion blender broke, and I tried to make it in our blender, our regular blender. Our blender is also very old. It's something I would love to replace, so if you have a favorite blender that you recommend, please um, tell me. But anyway, I got a new emulsion blender finally for, it was a anniversary present that my husband and I bought ourselves. And I went to go make mayo in a wide mouth mason jar and the emulsion blender's end was just like probably two or three centimeters too wide. I was so annoyed and I thought, who designed this? Like what terrible person designed this emulsion blender to be just ever so slightly too big for a mason jar like don't they know that we need yeah anyway so i did find though that my swig top jars not mason jars that i could fit my emulsion blender in there which was a great discovery so yesterday we had tacos for dinner because we had some leftover steak because we had friends over on sunday and i ended up making that cilantro lime dressing i told you guys about and I will link, like I said, I'm always gonna link stuff, so don't worry. Um, and now it's in the fridge and it just is wonderful. And then I made homemade mayo this morning with my other jar, but I've only got a few of those jars. And I store a lot of my pantry goods in jars. And so I really do need to order, actually for sourdough starter, now on a different sort of tangent, I've been keeping my sourdough starter in a larger mason jar wide mouth. But I tend to need a lot of starter for the amount of bread that I do. Um, I don't keep like, you know, 60 grams or whatever on the counter. I tend to keep closer to like 100, sometimes 150. But I got some larger whack jars, which are so beautiful. I feel like they're the Cadillac of jars. Here I am going about jars. This is a, a great moment for me to tell a little funny side note story but I have to get my other stuff to chop. Let me grab that first. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. Just looking at my recipe. I've got some lemon. I've got some chives and dill. I can't wait to be growing down herbs. We're almost there. And then I have a red onion. Okay, so. When I met my husband, I lived in St. Paul, he lived in Minneapolis, and I ended up moving in with him. That's a whole other story. Um, and it was the middle of the winter and I was pregnant and it was freezing. And so he and my stepdad moved most of my stuff in to our, to his condo. Um, and what was funny about that is I didn't do, like I packed everything on my own, but I didn't do the actual moving. Um, I just, I had a really sick first pregnancy. Um, that actually, you know, I, at some point maybe I'll go into on video our story a little bit more, but um, for the sake of brevity, I will just say that after he finished moving, he came to me and he was like, why do you have so many jars? Like, what is going on? So every time we get a jar, and actually during the lockdown, he set up a whole pantry for me of jars um, because guess what? I have them all. I also had a lot of bottle, like sweet talk bottles at that time because I was really into making my own kombucha and I was a nanny. And my nanny family had saved all of their, like, you know, Trader Joe's has those really nice lemonades. 
that come in the swing top bottles. They had saved all those bottles for me. Listen, they they knew my heart. Um, I loved nannying for them. Anyway, I've got a lot of jars. I love the wax jars. I don't have a ton of them. I made apple butter a couple years ago and I gave those jars away, jars of apple butter at Christmas time. And you know I never got them back, which is fine. It's all good. Um, anyway, I would like to get some more jars um, at some point. And um, I'm excited about putting my sourdough starter in a nice wet jar. I especially feel like because it's going to be on my counter a lot, you know, I want to have a nice jar. Okay, so... While I'm finishing chopping all this stuff and mixing it, while my two-year-old is happy and my baby is upstairs sleeping, um, I always say I love when babies get on the two naps a day schedule because it just makes life so much easier. And honestly, my baby's so flex. She, she would nap on a walk or in the car, but she was up last night, which is pretty unusual for her. She sleeps through the night. She was up at like 11 and she had a bad dream, I think. She got scared, and so we brought her up in our bed, but then she wanted to be silly. And so I said to her, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna bring you back down. I nursed her and she went back to sleep. But anyway, I wanna talk about contentment. So one of the things that I wanna be really transparent about in this channel is just like my inner thoughts and emotions around all things homemaking, all things life, um, from, you know, honestly, a faith perspective. So. My husband and I are Catholic. I'm a revert. I grew up Catholic and I was part of a bunch of different churches in my 20s. Like I went to an LDS church for a while. That kind of started in high school. Then I went to an evangelical church. Then um, around the time my husband and I met, I was actually attending a Baptist church, American Baptist Council, and that's actually where we were married back in Minneapolis. But my husband grew up Lutheran ELCA and um, he and I basically had kind of like a, I could get into this in another um, video, but if you're curious, um, and I would like to know, like if there are videos that you'd like to see from me, you can tell me and I'll consider publishing them. But um, to bring it back to contentment, I think that that's something that God has always been working on me because I'm kind of a striver. I'm kind of a striver, I'm pretty ambitious. I want to have things right. I want things to be just so so on and so forth, you know, having things be well done and like, quote unquote, excellent. I'm like type A, you know, I always did extra credit as a kid. Um, that's just my personality type. I, I don't put a ton of stock in Enneagram, but I'm actually an Enneagram one. So, you know, I want things to be, um, and I think one of the ways the Lord kind of guides me and teaches me is through um, this is like my trick for a lemon. I squeeze the juice into my hand and then I'm able to catch all of the seeds without um, having the seeds go into the bowl. The bowl is just right below me, obviously. Like I said, I don't have a good setup for my camera, so we're just gonna have it be what that is today. Um, and I'm sort of following this recipe. I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing it perfectly. I actually made more eggs because I just know in our family, like, um, we were kind of at the point now where we need double recipes for all of us because we're six people who eat, including my baby. She loves to eat. So my husband works from home and a lot of times he's, you know, eating at home because, you know, he works from home. Duh. Um, but contentment, back to contentment. So, you know, we live in this beautiful old house, 1872. It's gorgeous. Like, I'm so happy to be here. I would never want to express anything but gratitude for, number one, having a home, right? Like, you know, with with the way that prices are these days and the economy, like, it's not something to um, take for granted, right? I've lived in all kinds of housing. I've lived in tiny apartments. I've lived with my parents before. Like, it's, yeah. So we live in this home. I absolutely love it. Um, but I'll be honest, the room that I dislike the most is the kitchen. And I'm going to tell you guys why. 
it is dark in here. I know it seems like it's light. It's not. There's a set of windows right here as I point with my butcher knife, but there's a porch. And so you don't really get much natural light. There's a door behind those cast irons or around the corner from those cast irons, but it doesn't let enough light in because as you can see, there's a whole partial wall there, right? Um, and I spend, if I'm not sleeping, I spend most of my day in the kitchen. I love to cook. I love to, um, you know, feed my family. And so I'm here all the time. And it's so funny to me because there are rooms that I'm hardly ever in in this house. And they have just, they're flooded with beautiful natural light. We've got a bathroom upstairs. It's just giant. It looks like something in a movie because you could film in it. You know, it's just kind of ridiculous. And yet, um, I would trade that bathroom for more light in my kitchen. And my husband and I have talked about maybe doing a remodeling project. And, and you know, if the Lord wills it, then yes. But also like, I have to learn how to be content in here and I'm going to be. Like, I don't have an island. I'm actually chopping right now on our um, high top table. No, how about you take some dill? Can I give you some dill? Okay. okay. He's just happy to play with whatever I hand him. Anyway, I I see women all the time in beautiful kitchens. I see them in kitchens that are naturally lit with these huge islands and there's room for, you know, they have these big families like we do and all the kids are able to gather around the island and cook with mom and they've got marble and they've, you know, it's like, Yes, I can very easily get into that place of comparison and feeling um, icky and almost like, um, look at this, you guys, it's getting, um, just icky. I can get into an icky place with it, but here's the thing. Um, a lot of that comparison and desire is like chasing after the wind. And maybe someday we'll do a kitchen remodel. Maybe we won't. And ultimately, like, my contentment is my responsibility. Um, and I have a lot to be grateful for. So I'm not going to be in a position where I'm going to be complaining incessantly about our kitchen. But I am dreaming of a remodel. I'm being honest, right? But it's like, okay, if that never happens, am I going to be okay? Yeah, I'm going to be okay. And that's my job to model that for my kids, right? Like our kids are watching us. I really believe more is caught than is taught. And if they can see me being content saying like, gosh, I wish I had natural light. When I take photos of food, I have to bump up my ISO to something crazy like 5,400. And it's always going to look a little dark in here. Oh man, you know what? Like it's okay. All right, I'm going to get the mayo, salt and pepper and keep mixing and working on this. I'll come back later. I just had to show you guys this beautiful mayo. I'm in our dining room because the light is so much better, but look at that, oh, so delicious. Here's the homemade mayo. Like I said, my apron's very dirty. I need to wash it today. Um, and here's the egg salad. I just need to mix it up. I think it's gonna be really good. Uh, if I have time, I'm not sure that I will, I am going to make chicken salad. And that's going to be a lot faster and easier of a project because I have all the ingredients ready to go. Chicken's been made, so on and so forth. Okay, I think this is going to be delish. Oh, I can smell all that dough. Looks good. Give it another stir, and then I'm gonna stick it in the fridge until it's sad that it's all done. Here you go. All right, now I'm working on chicken salad. I've got chopped up celery, halved grapes, craisins, dried cranberries, pecans, salt and pepper, 
onion powder, garlic powder, and I'm going to add chicken now. So we made, one of my favorite things to do, honestly, is to make a whole chicken. Okay, hold on, sweetie. Um, I'll make a whole chicken, usually on a Sunday or a Monday. I've gotten to the point now where I typically make, I will roast two whole chickens. I love to get them from a local farm, but I sometimes get them from the grocery store too, it's fine. And I will roast them in the oven. And then after we've eaten dinner, I will typically uh, debone the chicken and I will make broth. And I use that broth to make everything from rice to homemade ramen. I just love to have broth on hand. My kids also drink it, which is amazing. I know that there's um, bone broth, hot cocoa recipe. I have not tried that yet. Um, I would love to. And typically, like this, this chicken here is still on the bone. This would be all um, cleaned off. But we had so much chicken that we didn't have a chance to um, finish getting it all taken care of, which is fine because in my freezer, this is the other thing, like let's say I I have room to make broth from one carcass in a crock pot. That's how much my crock pot can hold, is about one carcass. I will often add chicken feet. I get them from my um, farm chair. I'll get chicken feet and I will add them for extra gelatin, but, um, Whatever bones I have left over, I just stick in a Ziploc plastic bag and I store them in my freezer. And then what I do is I take them out when I'm ready to make more bone broth. So I'm using the entire bird. I'm getting so much out of it. I know that people have a lot of feelings about meat on the bone and I just feel like um, we have completely normalized it in our house. So like my kids are okay eating um, meat right off a bone because they see that. Um, we don't just only cook boneless, skinless chicken breasts up in here, okay? We're going to have the whole animal. Um, but I'm going and adding this. You could also do this easily with a rotisserie chicken, too. Like, sometimes when I've made this recipe... Not um, one. Okay, hold on, sweetie. I'm going to... Um, I need another dish towel. Wow. Yes story of my life. I'm always, I'm going through so many dish towels daily. That's like another thing that nobody tells you when you're a homemaker. It's like, you're going to have so much kitchen laundry. Um, we don't use paper towels for the most part. We have them. I try to stay away from them. Um, okay. So sometimes when I make this recipe, you do in bulk, I have just gotten a rotisserie chicken, which is fine. Um, but of course I love it when I've got a bird that I've made at home and from a local farm that always makes me feel really good. And so this chicken salad recipe, oh, and the other thing is you can make this with, again, if you just got chicken from the store and it's perfectly fine to fry up some chicken breasts and stick that in, but I think it's really good with some dark meat in it, honestly. Um, I do, and I should go get little, baby Penny here. She is probably awake from her morning nap. And then my plan for the rest of the morning is to go outside with my littles. Um, but I do want to finish this chicken. This is like the story of my life, right? Like, um, <clears throat> I'm going to sit down and do like a heart to heart with you guys during nap time where I talk about some of my goals, like why am I doing this? Why, what is behind this? Why do I want to take you along on my day? Um, we'll get into it. We're gonna get into it. I feel really strongly about sharing skills. Um, I've learned so much from YouTube. Last summer, Seth and I watched tons of YouTube videos about grilling and smoking meat. And um, we learned so much about gardening. Um, <laughs> he also loves to watch these like Bigfoot ghost stories. I crack me up. Um, but I've learned so much and I just feel like why can't I share what I've learned? Um, 
it will tell you, and I will get more into this later, my focus and purpose with this channel is not going to be like a family vlog. I'm not doing that. No judgment towards anybody who does. It's just not what direction the Lord is leading me in. Um, I feel strongly that um, it's okay to have somewhat of like a presence online as a mother. I, I don't think that you, sh you need to be shrouded away. Now, if the Lord is calling you to that, you got to be obedient, right? Because I think we're all called to different things. Um, not everybody's supposed to have the same life, and that's okay. And some people feel certain convictions, and that's fine. And I respect that. I really do. Um, but I think it's okay to, to, to have somewhat of a public life. I know for me, like, I have some specific boundaries, especially with video, um, because of the nature of the medium. Hello, Daddy. Yeah, that's Dad. Seth just came back from the drugstore. I'm going to stop this video because I need to finish this recipe and I need to get the baby up from her nap. Um, just like a quick plug, as far as like baby sleep goes, if anybody's struggling with baby sleep and you wanna talk about baby sleep, you can DM me on Instagram or you can send me an email. I'm gonna put my email below. I love to talk with other moms about baby sleep. I'm really passionate about sleep, so. We can talk about that if you need help, but I'll come back later. Okay, as you can see, my kitchen is, it's a working kitchen, right? That's something I've been thinking a lot about too, like working kitchens versus like ornamental kitchens. This is not an ornamental kitchen. I am cooking food in here every single day. I am making a mess every day and I'm cleaning it up for the most part. But back to kind of what I was talking about with contentment. You know, my kitchen is like never gonna be as clean as I want it to be, right? It's not, that's a fantasy. I read a great meme the other day that was like, if you have young children and your dream is a clean house, find a new dream. Now, I will advocate for an orderly home, a, a clean home for the most part, right? Like we don't wanna be like getting sick, but it's not going to be perfect. And I don't want perfect to be the enemy of good. Like it's not a thing. Okay. Chicken salad. It's going to be delicious. I need to add mayo. I'm actually going to do a mix of just a regular store-bought mayo and my homemade mayo because um, I am still in process with how to make really great make like this recipe. It's good and everything, but I, I love the flavor of just a regular store-bought mayo too. So I'm just going to mix both of them in here. My kids are sort of peacefully playing, although Penny can hear me and she's gonna cry. So I'll need to go get her. But I'm so excited about this. I've got the egg salad done, chicken salad's almost done, and then I'm gonna work on my bread. I'm not sure if this is standard on every oven, but my oven has this thing called bread proof. It sets your oven to 100 degrees and it's the perfect temperature for rising bread. Okay, so, hi baby, happy. This is a sourdough <clears throat> sandwich bread. Um, if you've had sourdough, you know that it's crusty and it's like artisan. It's yummy. But sometimes in life, you need a sandwich bread. And I feel like um, if I could find a really good sandwich bread recipe that takes 
starter. <laughs> Hi, BB. Um, like that would be that would be ideal. Hi. Hi. That would be ideal. So I'm gonna let this proof and see if I can get it to where it needs to be, which is <laughs> twice the size. Thank you.